Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're gonna to be going over the best decks in standard, best of three, traditional standard. This is our uh, meta breakdown of the top performing ladder decks up to mythic rank. Uh, the goal of the video is to kind of highlight from a statistical basis, as well as certain league results from like MTGO, what's performing best in standard. If you're looking for a standard best of one, uh, we're going to try to get to the t eternal formats on Arena as well, provided that there's data available, Explore and Historic as well. Uh, those are all in the playlist in the channel. We try to get these out weekly so you can catch up and stay abreast of the latest in terms of innovations, new hot decks, stuff like that. Um, and as always, we get the data from Untapped GG, what you see on the screen. Uh, it's a companion tool that runs alongside your Arena client on PC or Mac. Tracks win rates, loss rates, deck collections, whole bunch of cool functionality, some draft help in there too. Link is in the video description if you want to get started. But I'll paste all these deck lists as well with timestamps in the video so you can find exactly what you need in one handy spot. Uh, so make sure to, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. This should be your one-stop shop for the best decks. Basically, if you need deck lists, come here. We got you covered. Um, we're trying to get to 10,000 subs by June. We're a little over 8,400 at this point. So uh, free and easy way to help support the channel. So jumping into it, we are looking April 23rd through the 30th. We're looking Diamond to Mythic Rank, best of three. 24,000 matches, so 48 to 72,000 games of Magic played. Uh, and we're just going to jump into it right away. Esper Legends continues to be the top deck in the format in terms of win rate, 66%. And this deck here got an upgrade with the form of Herald of Ang or Rona Herald of Invasion, not Herald of Anguish. That's a different card. Um, so this lets you loot, draw, discard, uh, sort through your deck. It untaps every time you cast a legendary spell, uh, which provides a lot of utility in terms of just getting rid of the wrong half of your deck, getting rid of duplicates, stuff like that. And we're seeing this in combination with a lot of four of legendaries. Um, the Rona, their earlier weeks, they were trying to play it with the Raven Man. It seems like they've cut the Raven Man entirely and just gone to the full four of Toulouse. Toulouse and Rona play really nicely together because Toulouse, when you discard cards, it goes under Toulouse. So you're creating kind of virtual card advantage. You're almost kind of drawing two cards a turn, oh, if not more, through the activated abilities. Um, the Herald, when it flips, the Rona, uh, becomes a 5-5 that when it's dealt damage, you get to eat away at your opponent's hand and get free cast. Uh, the rest of the deck is pretty much your stock Legends list. Skrelves, Denix, uh, Thalia, some Go for the Throats. It's a Rafine deck that's just consistently been putting up results in varied capacities since it's printing in new Capenna. Uh, Shieldreds, Full Four of Urtais, and Aos. Uh, the deck really takes advantage of Plaza Heroes for indestructible and color fixing, as well as a bunch of uh, channel lines. Helps you hit your line drops early, but then some utility spells late. The sideboard, you got cut down for early aggression, as well as another uh, go for the throat. Strokes and negates for counter spells when needed. Razor Slash for the greedy mana base style decks. Lauren for artifact enchantment hate. Another Urtai when you need a counter flash kind of threat. Kill spell, and then another AO for the non exile based removal decks. Notably, we're seeing these decks now play a single basic so they don't get field to ruined to death in the matchups. From there, we go to Grixis mid range. So, this is a 60, just shy 66, so 0.4% uh, difference between these two decks. And again, it's another deck that's been around for a while. At this point in standard, it's worth noting that it takes a lot for a card to kind of break into these new decks. Um, it's kind of seldom that you see kind of net new overall archetypes being developed in this sense. Uh, but what we have here is just your Grixis Shell, your Fable the Mirror Breaker, Corpse Appraiser, all the removal in the world, Blood Tides, some counter spells mixed in. Uh, the innovation with the deck, and innovation is a loose word, it's more just this card's really good, and guess what? It doubles your spells. So Chandra with Double Invoke seems like a very powerful top end to this shell. In the sideboard, very similar. You have Hand Hate, uh, some situational removal, and Lithomantic Barrage, Counter Spells and Disdainful Stroke, Bolt, Razor Slash, Liliana for Hand Hate, Gix Command is a pseudo sweeper, Katus for the value mid range games. You can exile um, a card and take all their key cards. So you can take their Atraxas, their Italis, anything of that nature. And kind of get them that way. You can take their Invoke Despairs or Shieldreds, and then just like another Chandra for the grindy matchups. From there, we head over to the five color reanimator pile, uh, 64%. Um, and these decks, 
this one's got actually no innovation to it, um, but it does have some, what I've seen on the ladder at least, is some folks are playing around with the numbers of Atraxas versus Atalis. Um, kind of free cast versus more card advantage engines. Atalis easier to cast in the deck as well. But basically what you want to do with this deck is loot, uh, throw Atrax into your graveyard, play Cruelty of Gix, Chapter 3, put it back onto the field. Otherwise it's a Racto shell, so they call it 5 color reanimator. It's really Racto splash Atraxa in the deck and then we see a lot of those very powerful red black cards which have been terrorizing standard for quite some time um, again the sideboard is very straightforward do we need to attack their hands do we need to kill things do we need card advantage kind of graveyard hate uh, and then talks are all for the go wide strategies including uh, mono white mid-range tokens stuff of that nature you'll notice with this deck you got a lot of off-color lands um, this is to allow you to hard cast a track set if needed, along with the treasures from things like Atushi, as well as the Fable of the Mirror Breaker tokens. I just found out this token, like this Goblin Shaman token, is like $14, which is crazy for a token. Um, from there, we go to a legitimate 4-ish, 5-ish, 5-ish color, 5-ish color midrange. Um, and this is a domain pile, so this deck here is looking to leverage um, a lot of the triomes to have domain, get cost reduction on things like leyline binding, cost one mana to remove any permanent uh, that's non land. You got drag to the bottom as a sweeper here, which plays nicely. Bird migration also when you cast it for its creature cost uh, allows you to cast the uh, get five one ones or sorry five three threes, or you could just discard it, gain some life, find a creature. Um, you're paying with stuff like Courier's Briefcase that also lets you draw cards late game, attracts up for value, draw a bunch of cards, Archangel of Wrath as a way to deal damage, uh, gave me some life. Uh, this version's also playing a couple copies of Invasion of New Phyrexia. Uh, Blue White X, create X number of 2-2 two -two, uh, Vigilant Knights. And then when it flips the battle, you get Teferi, a Koza of Zalfir. Uh, draw two, discard, unless you discard a creature, get an emblem, knights you control, get plus one, oh, and ward, and then tap X creatures. When you do target an online permanent, you get to kind of shuffle it into their library. Um, yeah, shuffle not put to the bottom. Um, I've actually seen some of these play Invasion of Alara and then play Cemetery Gatekeeper. How Cemetery Gatekeeper is worded is you, you remove counters. So you can cycle your herd migration and then remove the counters and then flip an Alara right away which seems kind of cool as well. Uh, again, this deck, kill things, hand hate, counter, counter, early aggro, and then go wide aggro and sunfall as well. Um, from there, we go to Jeskai Control, 55, 56% win rate here. Uh, and this is kind of a dragon, Zergo Ojitai, as well as Chrome Host Seed Shark. That is something you can't say 10 times fast, Chrome Host Seed Shark um so basically it you, you're casting spells kind of this is the mini ca hard cast shark typhoon at home a uh, bunch of kill spells counters mixed in disruption portal uh, these are artifacts so you get the value there um and then you have like wandering emperors a whole bunch of sweepers kind of mixed in try to kill everything there your sideboard again kill things counter things draw some cards early aggression kind of mixed into there so this one's really Stainful Stroke's really well positioned. We see a lot of these decks trying to be just slightly more greedy than each other, um, so it provides some utility there. So we've seen a lot of black, red, X, mid-range piles. I'm um, taking a look at MTGO uh, Standard Challenge 32, so this is top 32 uh, of the results. So we actually see a lot from the MTGO League being mono white. So we have some more controlling versions. If we look at this version, Meekstone, Mightstone, uh, Eternal Wanderer, Wandering Emperor, White Swan's Twilight as a sweeper. Um, really the only creatures in this deck are Ambitious Farmhand and Spirited Companion, really just kind of creatures that help you get to your next spot. We see four of Sunfall as well in this list, really just looking to kill everything. And then you got Myrex and Field of Ruin in the sideboard. Um, Surge of Salvation, Union of the Third Path for Card Light and Life, Vanquish of the Horde. So really just killing a lot of things. We don't even see the Bank Busters in the main. Main board is just, I'm going to kill everything you love. Um, so that deck took down. We see a more mid-range focused version. This one's actually a Boros version that's been going around a bit. Um, so we're playing Boros for Fable the Mirror Breaker. This card's pretty good. 
and then uh, Itali Primal Conquer get some free cast. So you're kind of ramping up, getting some value, uh, and then playing the Itali to free cast. Very similar kind of concept in the sideboards. Depopulates, Peacekeepers for tax effects mixed in. Um, another Boros version of the deck. Uh, strict mono white, but we have like the wedding announcement token version. So this is the more mid rangey style version. Um, these decks usually kind of oscillate between the number of Field of Ruin style effects. See Roadside Reliquary, Myrex paired in this version here. Um, we see a Grixis version just kind of value casting the Hidizuku and Kari. No combo element in this version, just this is a 5 mana card that when it dies we could get some potential value and reach. New Shield being featured in this version as well. So we see some variations with the deck as well. Some of these decks are also opting to play Breach the Multiverse in the sideboard uh, for the really grindy um, value. Like, I'm going to cast a Traxa, I'm going to try and cast a Itali. Well, I'm going to cast Breach and cast your things for free. Um, some are just like the doubles Chandra Invoke, uh, Grixis Pile that we saw some value, uh, some examples of, a Rakdos version with Chandra Invoke Despair, um, kind of doing that same thing. It's kind of like Chandra Invoke as your, your payoff, and then you got to Breach the Multiverse on the side. This version's also got like an Arc Fiend of Dros for just a heavier hitter in the main board. Uh, interesting mono red list here in 8th place. It's a creature-based version, a little bit heavier on the creatures as opposed to just the strict burn version that I played to um, the metagame challenge uh, with the Sword of Once and Future. So three mana, protection from blue and block, so the Grixis deck, stuff like that, a lot of the targeted removal. Whenever it deals damage to player surveil two, uh, then you may cast an instant or sorcery with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Um, so you get to recast your lightning strikes and play with fires or your strangles as well it's also got a couple copies of nahiri's warcrafting in the main um spell kendra uh, blood feather phoenix and kenra spell spear as some additional copies as well which is kind of cool in there um grixis or no this is just rakdos grixis uh rakdos sorry always fun to tell which version um we see kind of a mid-rangey version of uh this one's actually interesting. Grixis, Itali, Fairy Mastermind, Atraxa, Corpse Appraiser. So it's like the reanimator shell. Um, this is what I was mentioning. One Atraxa, three Itali kind of mixed into there. It's also got Invasion of Amonkhet that you can attack down and then flip to make a copy of your uh, creatures in the graveyard. Um, just seeing what else we got. Uh, Grixis version with the Chrome Host Seed Shark in the main. Kind of a value engine so not quite legends um but you got like wedding announcements fairy masterminds so just kind of a fair game version of the esperless obscura interceptor which the odd time sees some play not super played uh, invasion of new phyrexia in there the legends list just seeing if there's anything mono white with a copy of heliod i had this in draft and this card's insane um, when you get it going, uh, especially if you can flip it, just play everything at flash speed. Um, was really cool in that particular deck. Uh, more, this one is just a soldiers list, kind of flash soldiers style. Interesting to see Skrelv and Fairy Mastermind uh, in a soldiers deck. Uh, actually, Skrelv you sometimes see, but like not so much. Uh, this one's got like some counters to mix in it. So, and then Invasion of Gobukan. Uh, just seeing if anything else interesting like i was mentioning the raven man this is the four color uh version with slogark and um thalia as well as thalia and the gitrog monster mixed in there reanimator with the traxa and itali kind of mixed in there a little bit more controlling version does this one have breached the multiverse in the main it does not so you can kind of see, it's it's still a lot of Mono White versus Rakdos versus Grixis versus kind of Atraxa piles. Um, we're trying to see some of these creature decks try to uh, push through, but like the creature decks tend to be these legend decks, whether it be Esper, the Four Color, whatever it may be kind of mixed into there. Um, sort of Once the Future also featured again in a Mono White version of the Soldier's deck, um, but now we're getting pretty low in the standings. 
to see. We got the honorary mono blue deck in there. In any case, I'm going to wrap this one up. As you can see, we got a subscriber in the top right. It's free and easy to subscribe. Hit that sub button. Helps out the channel. Let me know what you've been playing, what's been working for you. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching.